China is about to do what no nation has ever achieved, bring a piece of Mars back to Earth. The Tianwen-3 mission is officially underway, aiming to return samples that could hold clues to ancient life on the Red Planet. In this video, we break down how China plans to pull it off, what makes this mission truly groundbreaking, and why scientists around the world are watching closely. China's Tianwen-3 isn't just another interplanetary mission. It's a fully integrated, multi-phase sample return project that marks a technological milestone. With a launch window set for 2028, this mission aims to bring Martian soil and rock back to Earth for the first time in history. If successful, it will be the first mission to collect samples from the Red Planet and return them safely to our world. The mission is uniquely designed with a two-rocket system. The first rocket will carry a lander and ascent module, which will travel to the surface of Mars. This lander will perform the task of drilling up to two meters beneath the Martian surface to collect samples, depths never before reached by any previous mission. The second rocket will deploy an orbiter that waits in Martian orbit. Once the lander completes its drilling operation and secures the samples, a mini-launcher, ascent vehicle, will carry those samples from the Martian surface and dock with the orbiter flying above. This is one of the most technically complex operations ever attempted in planetary exploration. Docking in orbit is already difficult near Earth, but doing so in Mars orbit, after launching from a lander in Martian gravity, adds multiple layers of challenge. Once the orbiter successfully captures the ascent vehicle, it will begin the return journey to Earth, bringing with it a sealed sample container for analysis by scientists. The timeline is ambitious. From launch in 2028, the return could take place in the early 2030s, depending on planetary alignments. What's noteworthy is that while international plans, like NASA and ESA's joint sample return, face delays and logistical hurdles, Tiamen 3 is already moving into full-scale development with clear direction and coordination. China's space agency has prioritized this mission, drawing on its success with earlier missions like Tiamen 1, which delivered the Zhurong rover to the Martian surface in 2021. At the heart of Tiamen 3 is a question that's fascinated scientists for over a century. Was there ever life on Mars? To get closer to an answer, the mission's team is zeroing in on one of the most promising methods, analyzing deep Martian soil for biosignatures. And one scientist is playing a crucial role in shaping where and how this will be done. Professor Il-Yang Li, an astrobiologist at the University of Hong Kong HKU, is a key member of the Tiamen 3 science team. He's leading the effort to identify the most scientifically valuable landing site for sample collection. His specialty? Targeting environments that could have preserved signs of ancient microbial life, especially those resembling extreme habitats on Earth where life still thrives today. These locations include ancient river deltas, lake beds, and clarich terrains, which on Earth are excellent preservers of biological material. Mars, after all, is believed to have once had a thicker atmosphere, liquid water, and a warmer, more stable climate. If microbial life ever existed there, it would have most likely been during this ancient era, around 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. The Tianwen-3 lander's drill will dig up to 2 meters deep, a strategy that significantly increases the chance of finding preserved organic molecules. Near the Martian surface, radiation from the sun and chemical oxidants degrade organic materials quickly. But below that, the environment is much more stable and protected. That's where potential biosignatures, indicators of past biological activity, could still be intact. Scientists are looking for several types of evidence. Complex carbon molecules, isotopic ratios that suggest biological processes, and even potential microstructures resembling fossilized cells. While any one of these markers might not be conclusive, a combination could strongly suggest that life once existed on Mars, even if only at the microbial level. Tiamen 3's sample return enables a breakthrough that no rover alone can deliver. On Earth, we can use high-resolution mass spectrometry, synchrotron radiation facilities, and nanoscopic imaging tools that simply can't be launched into space. Having Martian samples in Earth-based laboratories allows for decades of testing across multiple disciplines, far beyond what's possible with in-situ instruments on Mars. Bringing Martian material back to Earth isn't just a scientific feat, it's a responsibility. 
One of the core concerns surrounding any sample return mission is planetary protection. In simple terms, this means preventing potential contamination, both of Earth by Mars and Mars by Earth. And for Tianwen-3, this aspect is being handled with serious attention. China plans to establish a high containment testing facility in Hefei, designed specifically to analyze and store the returned Martian material. This facility will operate at a biosafety level that ensures even the most remote biological threats are contained. Scientists will first scan the samples for signs of life or any unusual biological activity before allowing broader access for study. Although the likelihood of finding active Martian organisms is extremely low, international protocols demand that returned extraterrestrial material be treated with caution. That's not fear, it's smart science. Even trace amounts of alien organics, if mishandled, could potentially confuse future research or, in the absolute worst case, pose a biohazard. The Hefei lab acts as a gateway, ensuring all safety checks are completed before any material is distributed to researchers worldwide. There's also a reputational dimension here. The success of Tianwen-3 doesn't just depend on collecting samples, it depends on managing them with transparency and scientific rigor. Establishing a robust planetary protection protocol will help China gain global trust and encourage international collaboration in the analysis phase. Once the samples are cleared, it's likely that scientists from multiple countries will be granted access, paving the way for a shared scientific achievement. This effort also signals China's growing capability in astrobiology and space biosafety infrastructure. Few nations have ever built facilities with this level of biosecurity for space material. The Hefei lab could become a cornerstone for future missions, not just for Mars, but potentially for lunar, asteroid, or icy moon sample returns in the decades to come. Meanwhile, there's also an underlying sense of urgency. With NASA and ESA's Mars sample return mission now projected for early to mid-2030s, Tianwen-3 has a real opportunity to be first. Not for competition's sake, but because science benefits from having access to Martian material sooner. Tianwen-3 is more than a mission. It's a message. A declaration that China isn't just catching up, it's pushing boundaries. From complex dual rocket logistics to astrobiology-led site selection, and from planetary protection labs to a bold return plan, this mission could redefine our understanding of Mars and our place in the cosmos. Whether it finds life or not, the act of reaching out, grabbing a piece of another world, and bringing it home is itself historic. And if China pulls it off, the ripple effects will be felt far beyond the launch pad. The Mars race has officially begun. As nations look skyward, Tianwen 3 reminds us that the new space race isn't just about speed, it's about vision, persistence, and who dares to lead humanity into the next chapter of interplanetary exploration. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.